Today we're going to talk about three principles all long-term investors can use to be more successful. Now, notice I use the word principles. And the reason I'm using the word principles is they are timeless. These three principles apply whether you're watching this when the video is made at the beginning of 2024 or whether it's six months later or six years later, you can use these three rules as timeless ways to be a better long-term investor. Okay, so let's get started. The first investing principle is faith in the future. And so what I mean by that is faith that the markets will go up over time. Now, why do markets go up over time? Well, because dividends go up over time, company earnings go up over time, and the prices that people are willing to pay for those dividends and earnings go up over time. And so let's do a quick refresher. Here's a chart looking at the last 50 years in the stock market. Now, the blue line or the blue section is the price of the market going up over time, and all of these vertical lines are linked to a headline. Any of these headlines could give us pause for investing in the market, but realizing that news and noise are all part of the cycle of long-term investing. In this specific scenario, this goes back to 1970. If you would have had $10,000 in 1970 and just left it in, it would have averaged about a 10% rate of return and you'd have a little under $2 million. Okay, now that's not any indication of future results. That's just showing the stock market goes up over time, right? So we need to have faith that things will be okay. The world is not going to absolutely melt down. If it does, there is no financial plan that's going to work. If the world melts down, there is no investment strategy that's going to be successful. And so the first thing that we have to say is, hey, I think in the future, things are gonna be okay, right? That doesn't mean the president you want is gonna win. That doesn't mean the economic policy you think should happen is going to happen. But what it does mean is over time, markets go a certain direction. And so you need to have faith in the future. The second principle to be a successful long-term investor is having patience in your perspective. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, when we talk about perspective, do you have a short-term perspective or a long-term perspective in the markets? Now, while it can be challenging because the way the news comes out, it's giving you news every single day or every single hour, depending on how often you look. But to be a successful long-term investor, you need to have a longer-term perspective. So let's go to this chart. And when we start at, does the market go up? Well, on any given day, the markets go up about 53% of the time. So it's a little better than a coin toss that you'll be successful or you'll have, be having a good day if that's driven by the market going up if you look on any given day. But what happens is as we move up in our time horizon and we move to one month, three month, or even look at a year, which means if you were to look at your annual statement, about 77% of the time or three quarters of the time, the market's going to be positive. And as we continue that process, five years and then 10 years, at 10 years, more than 97% of the time the market is positive. And so when we think about our perspective, that is our choice, whether we want to have a short-term or a long-term perspective and realize that having a long-term perspective is going to give you a better framework to be a better long-term investor because 97% of the time that portfolio is positive. And so we, you may have heard the phrase, it's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. And so building a long-term plan that allows you to get invested and stay invested and having patience in your perspective. The third principle to be a successful long-term investor is having discipline in our decisions. Now, when I say decisions, what I really mean is our investment decisions. So we need to be having discipline in those decisions. And what does that mean? Well, at its core, what it means is buy low, sell high. Now, I'm sure you've heard this, and that is easy to understand, but it is more difficult to do. Because what's the challenge? The challenge is when you look at your portfolio, right? What are the things that you want to buy more of and what are the things that you want to sell? Most people, they want to buy more of the things that have done really well and they wanna sell the stuff that hasn't done great, right? It's, hey, why do we own this thing? It hasn't done great in years, right? We wanna buy more of that thing that has just done excellent. The challenge is, as we know, if we are buying low and selling high, we actually do the opposite. And so this can be a really challenging thing for people to do actively. What is a system that they can put in place that we can use that does this automatically? Well, we can just rebalance the portfolio. That is an automatic way of buying low and selling high. So let me give you an example. I'm gonna give you a chart, and this can be a starting point for all investors as an example. So let's say you started 
with a portfolio that was 60% stocks, 35% bonds, and 5% cash. That's not to say that's a great portfolio or a terrible allocation, that's just an example. Well, what typically happens over time if you're retired, for example, is you might be spending down a little bit of your cash, your stocks might be going up more than your bonds because historically, stocks go up more than bonds. Well, how might that portfolio look even after a few years? Well, after a few years, your cash has gone down and your stocks, because they've gone up in price, now make up a much larger percent of the portfolio. And what does that mean? It means that your portfolio today has a much higher risk level than your portfolio did even a few years ago, even though you haven't been buying or selling. That's just the fact that equities, stocks, typically go up more than bonds, and you can have a portfolio that gets out of whack and makes you more aggressive than you were even a few years ago. And so setting up some kind of, now get with your advisor on this, some kind of annual or whatever that rebalancing frequency is allows you to make sure that your risk tolerance stays in line with where it originally was, but also is a systematic way to buy low and sell high because as the stocks go up, you're selling the ones that did great, you're buying the investments that didn't do as great, and that's a much simpler way than having to make an active decision every year and selling your winners and buying losers because that feels difficult to do, even though intuitively, we know from a price perspective that increases our chance of success. So just having a rebalancing strategy makes it that much easier to be disciplined in our decisions. And so in summary, the three core principles that long-term investors need to be more successful is one, faith in the future, two, patience in our perspective, and three, discipline in our decisions. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for investing your time with the personal CFO.